see that just a second So as you can see that uh, uh, Pallavi, you can turn off the video. Sure. sure. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, the voice is lagging. Yeah. Is it fine now, Acha? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So we are going to discuss about some of the benefits and importance of manufacturing. So uh, first of all, uh, here you have the capability to create a bomb. You can create a bill of material. You can define a recipe, how to manufacture your finished good. You can also uh, define what is your raw materials you are going to use, what are your operations you are going to use for making an item. So that is what is bomb for you. Now, if you see, you have two types of bomb you can create in ERP next. One is your single level bomb and the another one is your multi-level bomb. So one use case I can give or I can uh, just uh, cite is that, suppose if you're making a biscuit, okay? So now for making a biscuit, maybe you have so many intermediate steps. One can be you are making a dough, you are, you are making a molded dough when you are getting a proper shape and finally you are getting an output, okay? So that is like a multi-level bomb for you. So we'll talk about that. We'll show you how is the multi-level bomb created in ERP next. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is what in a gist that suppose if you have multi-level intermediate products, you can create multi-level bomb. And the final output can be your finished item. Uh, just a second. Uh, now talking about the three basic process which we can do uh, in ERP next is that we can do a make to stock process, we can do a make to order process and we can do an engineering to order process. So make to stock is basically where you get a bulk order and you want to prepare uh, in hand. One use case could be uh, when you get a bulk uh, quantity uh, or when you get a bulk order for particular garment industries, uh, maybe 6,000, 7,000, what you actually do is that you basically do the two process in hand, like cutting and stitching. Because after you have done the stitch process, maybe you can attach a brand of that particular company, maybe a Fab India brand, maybe an Ikea brand. So what you do is that you plan before. So in those cases, what you try to do is that you, as soon as you are about to get an order, you try to do a make to stock process where you are prepared till the stitching part. And once you get an out, uh, once you get an order, you can go ahead with existing process. Uh, anyone wants to say something like, and I can see someone's mic turned on. Okay, so I'll continue on this. Uh, so make to stock is basically you define a reorder level for, for your particular item. And based on the reorder level, a material request is being triggered. It can be a material request for manufacture. And once the manu manufactured material request is being created, you can create a production plan. And from then and there, you can execute the work order. Now our make to order. Make to order is a, when you get a confirmed order, when you have the sales order from the consumer or the client and you go ahead with, either you can do a production planning. If you have more quantities, you can plan, basically you can plan, okay, how many raw materials I'm going to buy? What is my process? How you're going to execute that? And things like that. Now for the engineering to order, okay. In this particular thing, you do have a confirmed order, but what happens is that sometimes you might need to add certain items. You might need to add certain 
new items, certain new specification of items in the existing BOM. So we will show you how to do all these activity in our ERPNX. Uh, not talking about the production plan. Uh, so basically, uh, if you see my production plan, uh, I have just, uh, like if you can see, uh, just a second. So in the production plan, you can see that uh, you basically try to create a production plan against a sales order or a particular, um, I would say, make to stock type of transaction. You try to choose your uh, finished items. You try to choose your sub-assembly items. And you try to plan for the raw materials. You try to procure the raw materials. You try to find out what all raw materials are required for purchase. So basically, a uh, production planning is like planning allo allocation of your raw materials, your workers, your workstation to fulfill your manufacturing order or your sales order on time. Now, what we are trying to do is that because uh, our uh, demo is planned about the success stories, we have taken certain uh, company use case. We have uh, tried to provide a business overview. We'll talk about the key challenges and then how we have tried to solve that particular uh, challenge. Now, talking about uh, the Malkis uh, Manufacturing Limited, it is one of the most significant uh, manufacturing food industry. It is well known for uh, manufacturing biscuits. Uh, now, just to take an example of what it does, okay, what it, uh, what are its key process, okay? So, first of all, it try, uh, tries to make a dough, then it tries to uh, do a molding process on top of it, and then it does a baking on top of it. Now, what are the key challenges in this? So uh, as you can see that uh, they are known for making soft baked cookies. Now the thing is that um, they have weekly flavor. Uh, so on week one, they either have chocolate flavor with choco chips. And in week two, they have a coffee flavor with uh, tutti and fruity. And in some days, they have a special orders where they manufacture both of the items uh, simultaneously. Now what we have done is that uh, we have created the bomb for uh, the soft baked cookies, but according to the week's uh, flavor, we uh, manufacture the item. So I'll show you the demo for that. So you can see that we have got an order for soft baked cookies. And this week, we are going to make uh, the sorry coffee flavor with tutti and fruit. Now from you can do two things. From here only, you can either request for raw materials. If the quantity is not that high, you don't want to go for production planning. You can request the raw materials from here only. And as you can see that there is a material request being created. And from the material request, we'll create the PO.
and we will just invert the product raw materials now once we are back to our sales order we have procured the raw materials now the thing is that we are going to create the work order from here and you can see that the work order is being created successfully soft baked biscuits cookies are over here we'll just configure the source warehouse which in our case is a stores warehouse we'll configure the work in progress warehouse and what we are going to do is that we are just going to see all the material item has come in or not we'll just save this particular work order submit this work order and as soon as you submit this particular work order it shows you two new buttons over here either you can start the work order as soon as you start the work order the quantity comes in you can create this and in the material material transfer for manufacture what you can do is that you can just add those two new items so in our case one is our coffee essence and the another one is tutti frutti so we will add the both the items quickly and once we do that we are ready to make a soft baked cookie with the coffee flavor so we will submit this as soon as you submit you can quickly navigate to the work order as soon as you are in the work order you can change, see the change in status we are in process and we can finish this particular product so 10 quantities we can say create okay sorry i i do have a work uh, operations so i'll just complete yeah so this is our screen 10 items in progress and we have a pending operation to continue so we will just update the completed quantity we will save we will submit and as soon as we submit we can quickly navigate to our work order and we can see that 10 items in progress and we have completed the operations we will finish this particular work order and as soon as we finish this particular work order uh, we do have a second challenge over here so let me come back to my screen so our second challenge is that what happens how to know where is my chocolate flavored soft baked cookies and where to know my coffee flavored soft baked cookies so what i have done is that i have created two warehouses just to make sure that we transfer it to the correct warehouse so we will just uh, send it to the coffee flavored warehouse we will save this and we will submit this as soon as we have submitted this let's come to our main screen which is our work order and you can see it is completed and 10 items are being produced you can also go to your material and operation which gives you a quick summary how much is required how much is transferred and ultimately how much is made in the connection dashboard so this is what we have done we have used the existing bomb but we have changed it according to our weekly preference and we were you will to do that with a quick setting in the manufacturing settings i think you know that where we need to select back flush raw materials based on material transfer for manufacture and the warehouse creation is very easy you can just go to warehouse list you can go to the tree view you can select that particular company and you can quickly go and say add child so this is one challenge which we have solved now coming back to the another challenge which we faced with this particular manufacturing biscuit company the second challenge which we faced was that baking okay there was a process where we were making the dough we were molding and finally we were doing the baking but as you can see that the baking was done in a chamber of three zones and each zone can bake only 30 quantities 
and the second challenge was that to maintain the expiry date and the third one was the as soon as the baking is done quickly the packing was happening now how we have done this particular thing in erp next so i'll just show you the bomb first so you can see this is our bomb for the malkist biscuit and if i go to browse bomb you can see that i have two levels so this is what i was talking about the multi level part where this is your first level where you are preparing the dough by consuming all these raw materials once this is prepared this acts as an input for the molded circular biscuits and you get an output as molded circular biscuits and finally what you do is that you do a baking process and you get the malkist biscuit now what is so good about this particular bomb is that if i go to this particular bomb of malkist biscuit you can see that there is a quick setting which we have done over here and the setting says is that we have done a batch wise operation and what is the batch size the batch size is 30 so now how it works okay how can we say that in the baking process whatever quantities you give you will get 30 quantities and each will be treated as a job cut so let me just show you an production plan i have already created that and kept it so this is this particular production plan is for our malkis biscuit and you can see that we have finally produced 90 Uh, just a second. I'll show you one which is uh, halfway incomplete. Yeah. So let me take to take you to this particular example where we have taken the end product as the Malkis biscuit. These are our sub assembly products, and finally we have done a uh, procurement of the raw materials also from the production plant. So our material request was complete, and now coming to the work order, you can see that two work orders are completed. we have got got the molded circular biscuits and now our final thing is pending so we'll make sure everything is perf uh, perfect over here as in the configuration the material is coming fine and now what we'll do is that we will try to submit this now as soon as you submit you can see that the quantity was 90 in numbers and we said that we can only produce 30 in quantities as soon as you submit this you can see that three job cards are created and each job card will have 30 quantities so this is how we have resolved that particular challenge and the simple process is that you can transfer also 30 quantities you can execute this operation you can get that particular 30 quantities biscuit and as you see this particular job card we said that we always have packing just after baking so what we have done is that we have associated packing as a sub operation to our baking main operation and as soon as you start the pro this particular job card you will be capturing your packing times also baking times also and packing times also so this is one way to uh, do this particular job uh, now coming back to my slides so fine we have done some real work for malkis manufacturing company and we have resolved two challenges for them now let's go ahead with our fable fashion lifestyle limited okay so fashion in the name is itself a very big thing i would say it has many plethora of divisions whether it is items whether it is warehouses or whether it is uh, i would say processes everything is diverse and big over there so now talking about this particular company uh, it's a largest garment manufacturers okay and they are known for making shirts blouses pants and they have six factories and branches now apart from that the basic challenges which we got from them like it was a bigger implementation for us we have to really brainstorm what to do things how to create items how to create 
uh, I would say stage wise items to know the quantities. Uh, so it was really a nice and a challenging project for us. And the second thing is that we like we implemented in phases. Okay, like phase one will be only known for the precise material master. Okay, how to upload photo shoot images after the items are created, and maybe every season they do it. So how to upload the newer images for those items? Now, how to make this uh, particular, uh, I would say, warehouse structure where you have self, bin, uh, and things like that. And, um, and the second point, which is the most important point, was that um, they were doing a pre-production activity. Okay, They were doing a sampling process where they were not uh, known about okay, what, what all material I'm going to buy, what all material I'm going to consume. And uh, at last, what will I get? Okay, And the thing is that, Sampling, uh, what you get is that you get a prototype approved and then you make a final product the, whose bomb is very different. Okay, So the thing was that they don't want to keep a bomb for the sampling process. Now, how did we resolve that particular uh, challenge? I'm going to do a demo to you. So I hope my Excel sheet is visible to you. So suppose in their case, uh, they had only four, uh, I would say, four raw materials. Now, uh, remember, the challenge is that we don't need to create a bomb, OK? So what we are going to do is that we are going to go to stock entry directly. And what we will do is that we'll create an add stock entry, OK? and what we are going to do is that we are going to choose a type first. And we are choosing the type as material transfer for manufacturing. Now, suppose in our case, we had only four items. But let me talk about it's very easy to copy paste the items over here. You can quickly copy paste it. OK. So but yeah, uh, I'll say I'll, I'll copy paste just the item for now. You just need to make sure that whatever is the way it is there in ERP next, the same way you can do a copy paste. Just a I'll just add the quantities. Yeah. And I'll just provide the source warehouse. Just a second. Yeah, so I'll provide the source warehouse, which in our case is the storage warehouse. And our default warehouse is the work in progress warehouse. And you can see that the item is added over here. Now, what we'll do is that we will save this particular stock entry. And we will submit this particular stock entry. OK, okay fine. Uh, I just have a shortage of stock, so I'll quickly do a purchase reset and build the stock.
Um, just a second. I'm done with. So I have uh, got this talk. Now I'll just submit this particular transaction. Now this transaction is successfully submitted. Uh, I can see the report and I can see that all the quantities are moved from the stores warehouse to the work in progress warehouse. Now what I'll do is that I'll create a particular stock entry. We'll go again to the stock entry. We'll say add stock entry and the here the type is our manufacturer. And what we'll do is that we will again add the items. Items are added, and this time our source warehouse will be nothing but the work in progress warehouse. And our default target warehouse will be our finished warehouse. And we need to add our finished item also. So we will just add our finished item, which is nothing but our applic jacket sample medium size. So we'll go over here, we'll add this. And we'll say the quantity is one. We'll go over here, we'll say this is, is finished item. We'll save and we will submit. So finally, we have got our final product, even without the bomb. One piece of applique jacket, and it's available in our finished warehouse. Uh, now, going ahead with my uh, slide, I would say. Uh, so yeah, these are some of the pictured, uh, I would say, uh, because fashion is known for pictures, so yeah. Uh, now, second challenge, uh, I would say, is that uh, which was more like a phase two, which was like a bigger implementation, which was that we have to add multiple location. Uh, so there were operational at six. So one was Mumbai, one was Lucknow, uh, one was Pune. So what we have done is that uh, we have taken branches for that. So we have created branch. Yeah, so right now you can see that is Mumbai and Pune, which we have created, but you can create the branches as per your, uh, I would say, available branches. Now, the second thing is that warehouses, okay. So if you go to warehouse list, go to the tree view, go to the, I would say, Travel Fashion Limited, you can see that for Mumbai location, we have added these warehouses. And if you go over here, uh, you have a description which says, uh, yeah, what is the location details, basically. Uh, now, going ahead uh, with our second challenge, I would say, where we had multiple operations, like how did we create the bomb, OK? Uh, so let me show you and do a walkthrough of bomb with you all. So if you go to bomb list, and let's choose our bomb, I would say. Uh, and in our case, the bomb is yeah, applique jacket, blue color, and double XL in size. Now, if you go to the browse bomb, just a So if you go to the browse bomb, uh, you can see that uh, basically, uh, if you come to my uh, slide, uh, we do have a process, OK, like a sequence of process, cutting, stitching, washing, pressing, and packing. And ultimately, you get the final product. Now, talking about the bomb, if you come to this particular bomb, you can see that you have a packing, which is your PAC. This is your like an intermediate item. Uh, so let me just expand everything, and then I will talk about. So suppose you have uh, consumed these raw materials, and you have got a cut product. Okay. Now this will act as an input for your stitching. So yeah, this is an input for stitching. 
Now you are doing a washing, okay? So this stitching wax is an input to that. Again, washing is an input to your pressing, and uh, pressing is an input to your packing, and ultimately you get a applique jacket. So this is our bomb. Now coming back to our challenge, okay? So you here we had the third challenge was that uh, we had multiple workers, and the fourth challenge was that in-house and subcontracting both at one place and i would say the third challenge was uh, which i uh, very much spoke uh, in the very first uh, slide uh, is that when you receive bulk orders uh, but you get the uh, bulk orders only i would say like uh, you are going to like if you're going to deliver uh, in a month end you're going uh, maybe mid of the month okay and you cannot start your uh, production activity uh, then and there. So in those cases, uh, what um, we have done is that we have done two process over here. Uh, one is like a make to stock, till the stitching part. And from uh, stitching, we are doing the make to order process. Uh, so that one was the third challenge we had. I won't show you the full flow over here, but I'll show you the production plan. Uh, so. Just a Uh, so we are in the material request. A material request, I think if everyone knows, it's, it's like a requirement request for you. You can either create a purchase request, transfer request, manufacture request, issue request. So in our case, we are doing a manufacture request. So we will save this and we will submit this. Uh, okay, oh, fine. We, we do have certain, I would say, uh, workflow over here. But yeah, we have submitted this. Yeah. So we'll submit this material request and now what we'll do is that we'll go to our production plan screen. We'll say add production plan and we'll choose the company as Abel Fashion Limited. Get items from material request and we'll say get material request. Just a second. Okay, for now, I'll just add the material request. Okay, so as soon as I add, you can see that whatever item I have selected, I've got it over here. I'll just click on get sub assembly items. And you can see the cut piece item is over here. And I'll just leave the warehouse over here. And if I click on get raw material for purchase, all my raw materials will come up. I'll just save this. And I'll try to submit this. 
So as soon as I submit, I can create a work. I'll just click on this work order and subcontracting PO. So you can see that two uh, particular work orders are being created. And I'll just procure the raw materials. So this is our make to stock flow. And once you get a confirmed order for applic uh, jacket, what you can do is that uh, you can get that particular sales order, but you can start it from the next process, which was our washing. Uh, so now going ahead with our uh, three uh, third slide, I would say last slide, basically. So we do want to talk about certain future possibilities. I think uh, when you have uh, many things to control okay many branches many location many products okay so you have a lot of things to control and then you think about how can i automate things okay um, and and from that context only we are talking about the possibilities i would say uh, so the the one challenge like one possibility we got is that um, like very few people has access to email okay uh, they hardly check any emails okay? so how about SMS integration at every end? And it's very much possible, like SMS integration, you can quickly do with the app minutes. So one possibility was that, like, how, like to configure SMS integrations on each and every action so that the people are communicated uh, then and there. Because a mobile is a thing who everyone sees it, OK? And now the second thing was that, uh, can we generate a mobile app for the shop floor people? Because they don't have, like, they're not much familiar with laptops. They're not much tech savvy. So they can just quickly check from the phone. Uh, they can either, like a storekeeper can just issue the stock uh, or a person can schedule a job. Uh, so these, these were the cases, like how to do a mobile app thing for them. Uh, the third one, I would say, like how to do an automatic uh, bomb generation as soon as you get a sales order. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, like uh, I, I think uh, this is uh, there in the ERPNX as well. You can do a template bomb generation, and from that template, you can also generate the variant bomb, uh, which is like an easy job uh, for a fashion industry. If they have defined it for one template item, uh, they can do it for the rest of the 12 variant items. Uh, so yeah, so how to do that automatically as soon as you get a sales order, that is one possibility which we are exploring and which we we'll like to do. Uh, the second one is that, um, yeah, like a work order and subcontracting order. As soon as the production plan is generated, every detail is there. Like you do check who is your subcontracted item and who is your in-house uh, uh, process. So you do check those uh, things. Uh, can we trigger that activity? Can we just automate the subcontracting order creation and the work order creation on that production plan submission button? Uh, then I would say, like, uh, quickly, like, uh, okay, I'll just create the PO and the PR should be generated. Um, and it will be generated in the, the draft state uh, so that people can do an invert because invert is a bigger process. You cannot keep on adding inventory. So that's the reason we are thinking we'll do an automatic generation of PO submission, but it will be in the draft status. Uh, the sixth one is that um, how to do, uh, like, uh, as soon as the PR is submitted, how to do an automatic generation of purchase invoice. So yeah, that's the fifth and the sixth because when you are in manufacturing, you are like, okay, I need to procure this. You, so you always do a purchase uh, transactions. Uh, now the third, seventh one is that, like if I'm very much known, if I do have bulk orders coming in and every sales order has to go as a production plan. So I would say this is a very big, bigger picture where like, now we have done phase two implementation. So we have the data. How is the process? How is the scheduling works? So we have the data. And that's the reason we are thinking how to automate based on that data, how to quickly schedule, how to quickly create a production plan from such and such date. So that is one thing. But yeah, this is very much you need to get into data. You have to read the data. And then you have to play with the data, I would say. So yeah, that's a seventh point which we are trying to explore. So yeah, that's it from my end. I hope you had a good time with me. So yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. And yeah, thank you, Slate. So I'm done. In case you have anything, you can go ahead.
So uh, thank you, Pallavi. So if you have any queries, you can ask Pallavi about those questions. And uh, uh, some of them, Pallavi, some of the uh, guests have asked the questions in um, our chat as well. And uh, currently it has answered one. Uh, I think Kathir Raj has one question. Yes, Mr. Kathir Raj, you can ask. Mr. Kapitra, you can ask it in uh, the chat box as well. Uh, she will be able to record it. Hello. Yes, now you are audible to us. Uh, actually, what is my question is, uh, uh, I'm having a concern that uh, uh, we are handling manufacturing process for uh, preparing the FG. Uh, so in that case, uh, the customer is providing the raw materials. And uh, we do have some consumables to prepare the FG. So we need to handle both the uh, items. So for the customer provided item, we should not uh, maintain the stock value. But for our consumables, we should maintain the stock value. This is my concern. Okay, okay, fine. So, so Karthik, uh, I, I think, uh, see, uh, I would like to check with you a few details. So, so when you say that uh, customer provided items, so how is that? Like, uh, you don't maintain any inventory for that? Is, is that so? Not understand, ma'am. Hello? Am I Hello? Understand? Not understand? No, I'm saying that. Um, like, can you explain it much better, or like more in a in a detailed manner? Like, when you say that you have the customer provided items. Okay. So, uh, like, if you can repeat once again, uh, basically. Um, we have a reason for a, a customer giving the raw material for my for manufacturing process for. Organizations. Hello, is that able one? Yeah, yes, you are audible. Please go. Yeah. A customer will be giving for a raw material for, for making of FG. Uh, we, we are using for some consumable materials for the making the process of the FG. How can I to manage uh, both materials? We have consumer pro consumer provided material will be zero zero valued costers. Uh, we are using for consumable materials valuable costers. How can I will uh, capture the value of the MG? Okay, okay, fine. Uh, I think I need to think over it. Uh, um, so basically, So my, uh, my uh, just my question is that you are uh, like you are keeping those customer provided values or customer provided raw materials also correct? Yes, customer giving for the raw material. Mm -hmm. okay. And you are using the consumable also. Yeah, consumable. Uh, yeah, for for, for example, uh, uh, one big rod will be given by uh, given from the uh, customer. Okay. We will convert to these small screws and uh, bolt that. That means uh, simple. Let me explain uh, the case. Uh, so now we have shown this uh, cookie, for example, now in this uh, demo for yeah, manufacturing. Yeah. So in this, uh, I will tell the same example. So in this cookie, uh, the consumer, the raw materials will be provided by the customer. Okay. What we will do is uh, the packing items that consumables will be our own products. So that okay. is purchased by us. But the raw materials for the cookie will be provided by the customer. So what we will do, we will prepare the cookie, pack in the boxes and packets, and we will deliver. So in that case, we will not uh, calculate the value for the customer provided item. We will calculate the value only for the consumables. For packing okay. material. OK, OK, fine. So now you can understand what is my query. 
Yeah, yeah, I can understand on your code. So, see, basically, I would say we need to do a, uh, like we need to configure something. Maybe you can create a bomb because that particular customer raw materials is having no value to you. Okay. Uh, you can keep it at uh, like a zero rate or something. But when you're doing the packing process, there you can capture the process cost, processing cost, the operation yes. cost. Okay. And uh, once you get the final product, it will only carry your operational cost. But uh, there are many implications. We have to try that case and we have to see uh, whatever, and like I would say, um, Okay, at what all places you want uh, things to work, okay? Like, okay, accounting impact will be this, inventory impact will be this. So once you do a transaction, we need to check out all these impacts, correct? And then only uh, drive at a decision, is this particular use case working fine with all other agenda or not? Uh, I hope, Karthik, you're getting me. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, okay. 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 Uh, Thanks. Karthi, uh, if you have a query, you can uh, contact us and this, the, I'm sharing you an email. Uh, you can contact us there as well so that it will be easy for you to ask us any other, any other questions uh, related to manufacturing and ERP next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Uh, you can raise your hands in the virtual hands. Okay. I think uh, all questions are worth. So, I have shared the contact address in the uh, the email address. So if you have any queries, you can share those queries on that email. So we will be able to resolve it uh, quickly. Yeah. So uh, with this, uh, we are ending our uh, webinar. And uh, we have shared one link of uh, Frappel. Uh, Pallavi, there is one question in the chat box uh, from Benjamin Rosary. If you can address that. No, just so that I'm checking it out. Uh, in job code, how to manage rejected quantity, correct? That's so. Okay, uh, so see, uh, like uh, I would say that uh, there is nothing uh, currently available. What, what you can do is that because you're doing stock transfer against a job card, okay? Now, suppose if uh, something is not working, something is at a rejected warehouse. So what you can do is that you can either use uh, material transfer to transfer that particular item to the rejected warehouse. But in case if you want to do uh, capture, okay, how much I have transferred against a work order, you can use the stock entry of type material transfer for manufacture and you can transfer from that particular warehouse to the rejected warehouse. So that is another way of doing it. But yeah, no direct way. This is just a workaround. I'll say. Mr. Benjamin, I think uh, Pallavi has answered your questions. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yeah, yeah, I have one more question. I have mentioned no while sending subcontract. Uh, is there any option to uh, send uh, more than uh, bomb quantity? Yeah, yeah, sir. I think uh, uh, even for the subcontracting settings, you do have this feature where you can okay. change it from bomb to the material transfer for manufacture. I think it has. But uh, while doing no, that uh, that time it's not accepting because it shows uh, only the mentioned quantity only make uh, able to make a transfer like that it's showing in stock entry. OK, OK. I'm just checking your settings, sir, just a second. Huh? There is a setting. Oh, oh. Right, yeah. Oh, sir, I can do one thing. I'll just get your details from uh, Tejas, and then uh, I'll I'll let you know. Okay. 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 Thank Mr. you, Benjamin. If you can share with the uh, your email address on the chat. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So, any more questions? OK, 
Okay, I think the questions are over. So uh, thank you all for joining this webinar and uh, happy evening to you. And as well, we have shared one uh, shared with you one. Uh, yes, yes, uh, Mr. Abdul, you will get uh, a recording on YouTube. So we will share you this uh, link. Yeah. So uh, with this, you can also registered on for the uh, Prape local event, which will be happening in Pune. So we have shared the link here. So I'm resharing that link. Yeah, please, uh, a humble request to everyone. Please do come. Uh, we'll get a chance to meet in person and connect, I, I would say. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And uh, happy evening and happy weekend to you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pallavi. That was a really great session. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Karan. Thank you. Thank you, Pallavi. Thank you. Thanks, Pallavi and team. Thanks, Pallavi. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.